into that. Hi, I'm Kathy Giordano, and this is Charlestown and Beyond. Welcome. Tonight we're having kind of a unique uh, show, and I brought back one of my oldest and dearest friends. I shouldn't say oldest. I'm old. He's not. Um, going back to the 1980s, when I worked as a reporter, photographer at the Charlestown Patriot, and this young man was the liaison for the Central Artery North Area Cana project that just annihilated the city square as we knew it and brought it to what we see today. Let me welcome my guest, David Flanagan. Well, thank you, Cookie. Thank you for having me. I'm so glad you're here. I am also, and I'm not really that far behind you. <laughs> well, you look like a kid to me. <laughs> it's, it's, it's just healthy living, healthy it, living. It is, it but is, it is. And you, you have lived a healthy I, life. I've certainly tried, and I'd like to thank you for inviting me today because I've noticed the last couple of months You've had the mayor here talking about the casino. Mm -hmm. You've had Santa Claus. Yes. You've had my good friend Shannon Lundeen and Mike uh -huh. Kane talking about drugs and yep. things of that nature. So I appreciate the fact to talk about something that I was involved in, which I think has really helped shape Charlestown into what it's become today. And it hopefully is. it's not ancient history. I remember Ken Stone, mm -hmm. who was the governor of City Square at that time, and so active in the... Um, the committee right. that oversaw everything down there. Him, um, and, and all the hard work that he, he did. And, um, and, and that committee, and I know in a little while we're going to bring up a photo of the original sure. committee. But um, they, uh, the first time I heard this came out of Ken's mouth, it was the gateway to Charlestown. Mm -hmm. And it is it coming through Boston. And now, as you know, we're trying to resolve the problems at the other gateway to Charlestown in right. Sullivan Square. So maybe perhaps this is a good way of showing people how a community, an entire community, can work together jointly with the government. In your, your case, it was the Mass Department of Public Works, mm -hmm. and now it's basically the city of Boston. Right. But it can be done, and we can see as proof the beautiful city square we all live with today. So I thank you for coming on, David. Well, thank you, and I'd love to talk about yeah. that. If I, I'm not sure where to begin, but what I'd like to say is, if you remember, as I do, back in the day, long before many of the people living in Charleston mm -hmm. can remember, we had Joe's Pizza. Yeah. We had the Globe Discount Place. Yeah. You know, we had um, Station 15, which I wasn't too familiar with, but we had Dot's Diner. We had so much going on down there. Right. However, we also had overhead green ramps. Yes. Chaotic traffic that just went every which way. People uh, disembarking from the T. Mm -hmm. And worst of all, I think, was it was inhabited by birds. So it would, you uh, really... So many birds. Not only so did, did you take your life in your hands crossing <laughs> the street, but they were strafing you every minute they, they got it, it seemed. So it really, as the gateway to Charlestown, where the Paul Revere steps were, yes. really it was so important to do something in that area. And back in 1977, a lot of residents started talking about doing that, you know, the members of the task force. Mm -hmm. And as you probably remember, they really are the, were the impetus to planning yes. the Cana project. And in fact, in 1982, when the federal government decided they didn't want to fund the Cana project, the North Area Task Force gathered 5,000 signatures and lobbied Congress and mm -hmm. the government mm -hmm. for the Cana project. So it was really their efforts that brought, brought that project. The work that they did on behalf of the community mm -hmm. was one, I mean, it was just, they were tireless. They, were. they not only put in hours, they put in years mm -hmm. of dedicated mm -hmm. service, volunteer. I mean, the, you can't give them enough credit for what they, it ended up to be. You, you can't, and I spent many hours talking with each and every one of them, mm -hmm. as well as many other people, as you know, from the community and beyond. And they were on me and the department constantly to make sure that we had a finished product mm -hmm. that we could all be proud of. And you know, unlike today with the problems at Sullivan Square and the people involved and who seem to be uh, the loud voices, mm -hmm. they, none of them to the person had an ulterior motive. They didn't gain anything from this. Right. There was no financial reward for them. And, and it's sad that it has gone another way now as we talk about um, 
renewing the other gateway in Charlestown sure. and Sullivan Square. And I'm coming out and saying that. Okay. And um, I, I know you know what I'm talking okay. about. Well, let's talk about, let's start off by the Cana project, C-A-N-A, Cana, mm -hmm. Central Lottery North Area. Correct. When did it begin? Okay. What brought it on? What happened basically, if you remember back in the day before 1973, well, uh, when the artery was created, mm -hmm. they created the notorious so-called S-curve approach. Yes. When you came over the Tobin Bridge, you had to make a quick decision whether to go left or right. And mm -hmm. It was a very sharp turn. Mm -hmm. Transportation legend has it that that, was, that shape was, it was configured in that way rather than take property to belong to an influential person. They yes. worked around it and yes. created a public safety issue. Mm -hmm. But regardless, the Cana project, most of the reasons for that project were to eliminate that S-curve. There was a length, there was a merge area that was straightened out uh, on 93 where, in Route 1 where people could, it gave them more space to merge and create a sa safer traffic flow. Mm -hmm. Also, they wanted to remove those ugly overhead ramps we talked about. Yes. Open up the um, city square they were area. our green monster. Exactly. Yeah. And it was, it was sort of the finishing touch to what was happening along Main Street when they took down the L. Mm. And in the process, at the end, we created a park, which wasn't originally the plan, but became part of that. So really, it was to improve public safety was the main reason why it was created. Right. And I know that there was a terrible accident, mm -hmm. perhaps 1975, Here we, um, I thought, David, oh, here's the photo. Yeah. Here's the photo. Mm -hmm. um, Want to tell us what's going on here? Sure. Uh, anyone who was living in town or traveling over the bridge at the time remembers, I believe it was 73, I may be wrong. Um, car went out of control, truck went out of control, I believe hit an abutment, and as you can see, part of the Tobin Bridge collapsed. Mm -hmm. And that, uh, because of that, that bridge was out of commission for three months, and people had to seek alternative routes. And really, that was the approach to the S-curve that we I discussed a moment ago. Mm -hmm. So that's really one of the reasons why they decided something had to be done about it. And, and that was that was a real tragedy. Mm -hmm. The the um, man who was driving the truck passed away. Mm -hmm. um, I remember standing there at the time, looking at it. And, and if you're on Facebook at all, and you, you come across discussions about Charlestown, people always remember where they were yes. when that happened, and yes. they remember it vividly if they're old enough to remember. Yes. It was quite a um, quite a disaster. It really was, and then. And then the inconvenience caused mm -hmm. afterwards to right. the traffic flow. So that was really the start of f talking about the central artery. Yeah, to, to my knowledge, change. that was the beginning. And then by 77, um, as I mentioned, they started talking about let's do something to really correct that. Mm -hmm. The funding originally wasn't in the Surface Transportation Act, so Cana was conceived before the Greater Central Artery Project was conceived. The it big was a, dig? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was a standalone project designed to be built regardless of whether the artery was built. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's why it was so crucial that the funding be approved. And after the lobbying, which I mentioned by the task force, the funding was restored in the Surface Transportation Act. And I remember that Congressman Tip O'Neill mm -hmm. really um, was backing us he, to get the funding. He was we very need. critical to the funding. Oh, here we are. Tell me who these people are. Okay, the handsome guy in the far left is a younger version of myself, David <laughs> Flanagan. Uh, Richie Volk, our former majority leader and uh, representative extraordinary, extraordinaire in Charlestown. The late, great Senator Fran Doris, who was a wonderful uh, proponent and champion of the task uh, of the um, artery project. And Ken Stone, who we discussed earlier, really one of the proponents of this Central Artery uh, North Area project and one of the persons who kept me on my toes throughout the project. Now he's probably the hardest worker of that committee mm -hmm. and um, to this day he's still involved with the upkeeping of the uh, the park and it's being used for various events mm -hmm. and uh, but the hours and hours and hours that he sure. and his committee put in working with you, working with the state. And I remember Jane Garvey at the right. time was the uh, commissioner mm -hmm. of Correct. public works. Yeah, she took over after Bob Tanney passed away. Mm -hmm. He was the commissioner right when I started, but shortly thereafter he retired, passed and away. I remember um, interviewing Jane mm -hmm. Garvey at her office, right. um, you know, 
as we went along. How long did the Cana project last? Do you remember? Uh, I, la I was there three years. I think the in total it lasted a, at least 10 years mm. after I left. I think about seven years. Mm. To be honest with you, I've lost track of the final ending to it because of the incorporation into Scheme Z. Mm -hmm. Ch plans changed a little after mm -hmm. I was involved, but um, I know that the tunnel, they started constructing the tunnel in that picture we just looked at mm -hmm. was when we made the tunnel announcement, uh, which in, the tunnel started in 1989. Wow. And so, the, you know, that was a couple of years after the project began, mm. we started in the tunnel. Now, that whole area is state property, correct? To my knowledge, yeah. there may be areas... Now, here we go, David. What is this? Well, that's actually the, an artist's rendering of the uh, Cana project, which was created before the actual finished product. One of our DPW um, artists created that, and if we look at the other picture later, if we have a chance, we can show the S-curve that it that um, that are corrected. And if you look in the middle, there's a long pathway. That's really was the entrance leading down into the tunnels. They took that S-curve and they submerged the traffic um, into two tunnels, 80 feet below the ground, one 1,500 feet in length, one about 800. And they buried that beneath the ground and that shows the um, points where it was, it was uh, going underground. And, and an artist's rendering of the parcels that would be created following the Cana project. So at that time, the wisdom of the um, state DPW was to have tunnels. Don't do it on the surface. Get right. the uh, cars off, off the surface. So is this the S? That's the notorious S curve. As you can see, if you remember, coming over the Tobin Bridge, you have the S curve. We, we came down on a ramp down um, into the behind where the Ironside Grill is. Yes. Then we also had an access ramp there from Water Street. Mm -hmm. And then once you got up onto the system, you could either go north or go south or towards Stowe Drive. But that area was, the, was uh, one of the most accident-prone stretches of highway in the Commonwealth at the time. And look at the traffic. I yeah. don't know if, if at home if you can see the traffic. Um, but I remember that well. Um, but you know, the main problem that I think causes a lot of traffic on Rutherford Avenue today is there's no access from Route 1 onto 93 North. You have to get off in Charlestown, go through Charlestown mm -hmm. to Rutherford Avenue and pick it up in Somerville, mm -hmm. which brings an awful lot of traffic. It's, it, yeah. w it, was, it wasn't poor thinking because I know the state put an awful lot of thought into that. I think it was um, the feeling in the community at the time that perhaps that wasn't uh, the best way to go. I think rethinking it today uh, it it should have been that connection should have been made. Yeah, it's you know, I, working with Secretary Savucci at the time. I know mm -hmm. he was a visionary, and he's mm -hmm. really the he reason. He was wonderful. We had that project, yeah. and he had started off as an activist opposed to things like this. Mm -hmm. But he realized that depressing the the I forgot that picture was, there. <laughs> but um, that's that's a picture when uh, when we started doing the tunneling. We went into the middle of City Square and we removed different artifacts. Yes. And this is a picture when we began doing what was called pipe jacking. Mm -hmm. Pipe jacking was a way to tunnel underground while traffic was going all above ground and it basically pushed dirt through and they, they would dig the dirt out and mm -hmm. push it through and dig it out and that created part of the tunnel configuration underneath. I don't the know who area. the man is closest to us. Maybe that, you do. That was the resident engine engineer, Bill okay. Rogers. Okay. Who, oh, um, I remember that name. And that's Jim Conway? Jim Conway is right next to him. Yourself? I'm there, and as well as one of the uh, most uh, active members of North, North Area Task Force, Elaine McCarthy, who mm -hmm. spent hours as well as um, Ken. So th and then they had a lot area. of uh, artifacts there, and they had to stop work for a while while they... Yeah dug that up and they really got a lot of wonderful artifacts. That's, that's one of the most fascinating parts of the mm -hmm. project is really uh, Governor Winthrop's home was in that area mm -hmm. and then they had the three cranes tra tavern in right, the area. Right. And we found so many wonderful artifacts that are um, uh, being displayed and still that being cataloged. I went out to West Foxbury right. not long ago and was able to see some of the artifacts that were dug up at right. that time. And we did, we also preserved the portico from the YMCA we preserved a lot. We preserved the um, cornerstone from the Y, and we had an event. David, what did you enjoy the most of your job? Probably 
really having an, an opportunity to work with people in Charlestown to mm -hmm. really help shape. I certainly didn't do it alone. I was working with residents and I was mm -hmm. working with the media and but the engineers. But you were an integral part but, because you listened to everybody. You reported back. You never promised anything, right. but you brought the word back well, to your bosses and they listened. So well, that you did your job. You were the liaison, really. Well, thank you. And one of the things that just being able to help, being in a de somewhat decision-making ability mm -hmm. to be able to convey thoughts, yes. like you mentioned, we had a dual constituency. A lot of people don't realize my role extended beyond Charlestown Liaison. I also had to visit every community on, leading up to New Hampshire. And I was out morning, noon, and night mm. at breakfast meetings, making presentations. And I had to balance the needs of commuters who really didn't care about Charlestown versus Charlestown residents who may or may not have really cared about commuters because yeah. they passed through our community for years as, right. a, as an escape to, right. to get through. Just being able to do a lot of those um, things and the great people I had a chance to work with and the government, people in government I had a chance to work with mm -hmm. it really was probably my one of my most, if not the most rewarding jobs. And I've I had some good you, ones. I wish the city would bring you back at this point. I don't know. I know you're a very busy man. And maybe you could teach them how to work as a true liaison and listen to all the people, not just the loud voices. That That is needed in Sullivan Square. And I know I've talked with the mayor about that, too. And, and he agrees. He well, agrees. I would be happy to return to government, and I would be, and I would even move back to the to the city to do so. Oh, that would uh, be State great. or city government is actually some of the some of the areas I would like to return to. Yeah. But you're right ab about um, just d working on that project. It, mm. it, the consultants, the engineers, they had a job to do. Oh, here we go. Now this is the this um, was the ambulance. Correct. As part of the uh, mitigation efforts, we. Um, assigned an ambulance onto the Sullivan Square area oh, just right. to make sure yes. that we could facilitate. Is that how far back it's been there? Yeah, it's as you see it's from the headline, asset. Yeah. 1988. Wow. And that was um, that was part of the Cana project, having that ambulance yeah. to be able to assure people that they, we'd still be able to get through town if there was an Can emergency. Can you give a left to right there? Uh, that, I believe that's Richie Volk on yeah. the far left, uh, mm -hmm. Annette Tetchy. Dan Kobasevic, uh, both uh, active members of the task force. Yeah. Myself, Elaine McCarthy, Senator Doris, Judy Evers, who took over my job in the mayor's office after I left, and then Ken Stone in the far right. Wow, wow. So 1988, we've mm -hmm. had that uh, very needed ambulance right. down right yeah. across from the ladder nine in uh, Sullivan Square. That's great. Um, so. What were the challenging parts of your job? I mean, that, it had to be hard. Oh, I mean, it, you made it look easy and well, you never got ruffled, but what were the challenges you had to face? Well, thank you. You know, I actually enjoy being really busy. The busier I am, the better. And some of the challenges at the time, I was, we were, I was having a first child and it, the scheduling, mm -hmm. the difficulty in um, being on the road all the time. Right dealing with consultants and engineers who rightfully wanted to build the job, had varying degrees of in, uh, interest in whether the community's needs were served. Mm -hmm. My biggest battles were internal battles, convincing the department that we should or should not do something. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I had a commitment to the people of Charlestown, to the Patriot, who was, you guys were honest mm -hmm. all the time, and we had a great working relationship. But really, the challenges included just enough hours in the day and fighting the battles internally that people don't even realize that I often had to fight. Oh, here's, is this is the committee, right? Mm -hmm. That's m m number of the committee members. Would you like me to? Yes, please. Uh, Secretary Jay Ash, now Secretary formerly with Richie Volk on mm -hmm. the far left. Virginia Gossanak next to him. Peg Bradley and Jim Bradley mm -hmm. standing next to them. Again, Annette Tetchy and Dan Kovacevic. Elaine McCarthy, myself. Holding the check is your mother and my great friend, the late, great Kay Whalen. <laughs> She's a wonderful woman. Um, behind Kay was Bill Lamb. Next uh, is Ken Stone. The gentleman in the sunglasses is now Attorney General Mara Haley's chief counsel, Rich Johnston. Oh, wow. And on the far right is Representative Richie Volk. And thanks to uh, Richie's efforts, in, in large part to his aide, Jay Ash, mm -hmm. we got commitment for the $4 million for that park. So as 
you know, if you look in the background, some of the ramp is still standing. Yeah. But now we have um, a great park in the community for all to enjoy. So those that may live in Charlestown now and weren't there back in those days, look at what we lived with. Look at the ramps, the ugly mm -hmm. green ramps, and uh, and then picture City Square today and how right. beautiful it is right. now, how open. Um, let me see now. Um, any regrets? Personal regrets about the project now, when it was all over? My biggest regret was leaving mm. when I did and leaving the city. Mm. But again, that was family issues. Our mm -hmm. family members wanted a different environment. Um, just wanted to return. My, my family members wanted to go to the South Shore. So yeah. I went. And that's when you moved to Situate. Exactly. Right. And I had a great life in Situate, but I've, there isn't a day that I haven't missed Charleston. And I spend as much time in Charleston now that I, that I ever did. It's like all us. I'm, I'm there more, th Towers. more than I'm anywhere yeah. else. Oh, what do we have here? Well, Isn't that's, that interesting? <laughs> that's actually a piece of the Tobin Bridge. When they dismantled the Tobin Bridge, we had a number of pieces, and I happen to have secured one of them. And that piece is probably eight by eight inches mm -hmm. and probably weighs 25 pounds. Wow. It was so heavy. Wow. And I used to give those away at community meetings oh, to, to wow. some of the residents. Wow. We played little guessing games. <laughs> And that's what, that's what I would give them oh, as a um, That's fascinating. What, a, a, what a keepsake. I know I have a piece of the um, Thompson Square. When they, they dug up Thompson Square, I had a piece of the wooden water pipe. So mm -hmm. um, let me see. All right, I'm going to put you on the spot here. Mm -hmm. Can you share any interesting side stories that uh, up to now have never been known by the public? Nothing. Yeah, I, there are a number of different things. Let me think about this a minute. Um, just some of the day-to-day -day calls I got. Cana Project was blamed for anything from rodents to mm. raccoons in people's yard at the end of town. There was, um, when we took the uh, ramps down, people called and asked what we were going to do about the displaced starlings and sparrows. So oh, I wasn't they were worried about those poor birds? They were, yeah. um, one day a gentleman came in asked me all about the project, wouldn't tell me his name, wouldn't tell me anything about it. He said he was opening up a business. It turned out to be Todd English, <laughs> who opened up Olives. And one of the biggest things that people probably don't know is one day we were sitting in the commissioner's office, and I'm really proud of this. That's why I'd like to discuss it. It was about 20 of us sitting around the commissioner's office, and the consultant mentioned as part of the tunnel project, we would have to put all of, a lot of the dirt, certainly not all of it, under the Tobin Bridge for possibly years mm. to store it there. And I, having grown up in the housing project, I said, you really can't put dirt there with the people in the housing yeah, project. Yeah, the kids would be all over it. Cut them off from the Navy Yard yeah. and just the visual blight that that yeah. would be. And they, they, um, they said, well, we're gonna do it. And so I, I, we were in the meeting and I said, well, how high are the piles? And he said, not very high. And I said, I, I kept at it and he wouldn't tell me. And I said, well, let me ask you this. If I jump off the Tobin, well, I have a short drop or a long drop? <laughs> he said, a short drop, and I said, then you can't do it. Yeah. And I got out of that meeting. I told the commissioner. I told Secretary Salvucci. I contacted people from the different political offices. Mm -hmm. And because of that, we nipped that. I understand it Good. may have happened Thank after you. I left, but at that point, it did not happen because I just could not go along with something like that. See, you were the perfect guy for the job. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Well, I guess we have to wrap it up, David. Mm -hmm. What do you want to say in closing? I, well, let me, let me say something to the folks that are watching. You know, we really need a good guy. I, I mean, I'm, I'm embarrassing David by this, but you know, even as a consultant, we need a good guy to help us to get through the Sullivan Square, and here he is, folks. I mean, and again, I don't even know what David is doing right now, and I'm putting him on the spot, but if for no other reason to, to show the young people today that will take over this kind of a position, how it's done, how you work with the community, how you work with neighbors, all neighbors, and the powers that be, the state at your mm -hmm. point, and, and, um, and, and get it done to, um, to appease and please as many people as you can. David, as, as a neighbor and a townie, I want to thank you publicly for the first time after all these years well, for the job that you thank did. Thank you for all your help doing it. 
Well, I you guys was, were crucial to keeping yeah, us on our we, toes. Yeah, we did keep you on your toes when we, I was at mm. the Patriot and, and reporting all the meetings, and um, and that's when I really got to know you, and, and I found out the kind of guy that you well, really thank you. were. Thanks. You know, because we were there to find out the, the dirt and the truth, excuse the pun, the dirt. But I want to thank you. Well, thank you. Thank, thank you, you for having me here as well. And I hope to see you again soon, and oh. and, um, and it'll be interesting. Keep Keep track of what happens in Sullivan Square now, just for well, point I, of interest at I this do point. follow that. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I hadn't thought about it, but that actually would be, I do enjoy challenging positions, so yeah, I, hadn't, yeah. I really hadn't thought of that. But. Hey, listen, listen out there. If the mayor's listening or whoever with the transportation department, call me. The mayor has my number, and I will put you in touch with Mr. Flanagan. He's really a great guy. And I, I know you have a college degree and a master's degree mm -hmm. and all this stuff, so... Maybe I got you a new job, yeah. right? Right, and maybe you can hire an old lady as a receptionist. Or I don't something. know any old ladies in this <laughs> room. Not in this room. Well, but thank you. <coughs> Excuse me. That's it, folks. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you found this interesting. I know I did just in talking with David, preparing for the show, and uh, these photos. So, again, I thank you, David, well, for coming you. tonight. And um, until next time, folks. Take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and have it on the vine, and eat non-perishable goods. Bring down to the co-op bank, 201 Main Street, or down to the food pantry itself on Vine Street. Thanks again. Until next time, I'm Kathy Giordano. Goodbye.